I chose to to do something about history prior to slavery only because we've always talking about uh, mainly as black people we tend to think about ourselves in terms of slavery and then post-slavery uh, which is normal because we sort of like still in slavery so um, it's the most relevant experience that we have right now believe it or not so but i i i find that it's a good balance to to um see who we were before and where we are now um it makes it um somewhat more empowering to um to look towards the future so today i'm gonna talk about queen amenuranus um that's her name queen she was one of the Queen in Nubia, which is also a place called Kush, the Kush civilization. Nubia is currently today's Sudan. So the Nubian people, they were south of, uh, south of Egypt. So when Egypt was conquered um, by the Romans, by the Greeks, uh, prior to that, the Greeks, the Roman, the uh, Assyrians, all those civilization prior to that. When the Romans were um, occupying Egypt, the people of Nubia, they've always kept their independence. They always find a way to um, stay away um, out of the um, foreigners' territory, even though so Egypt was conquered, but Nubia was still, they were still free people. The Kush civilization, like I said, um, they um they were known to be um very good um fighters they called it nubia was called the land of the bow because they were very good fighters they, they knew how to use the bow they were best at it and as a result they kept they kept themselves free and independent and um um away from foreign invasion until the Romans were in Nubia, I mean, were in Egypt, like I said, they conquered Egypt. And at that time, Queen Amenorinus was the queen. This was around 20 BC. Now, Queen Amenorinus came from a long line of queens, and they were also known to, um, to be great fighters, like I said. She was blind in one eye, and it, it said... It was from a battlefield in Mer in Meroe. Meroe was the ca uh, new capital of Kush. They actually moved the capital um, and had a new capital in Kush just so they could be further south away from foreign invasion when they saw that their um, neighbor, Egypt, was conquered. Now, if you study, you may hear different theories between Nubian and Egyptians. You'll hear things like, they were enemies and they didn't get along well, um, but actually they got along pretty well. Uh, the Nubians and the Egyptian, they were trading with each other. You know, there was back and forth between the two um, people. No issues until foreign invasions. Now, Petronius, who was the, um, the ruler of the Romans at that time in Egypt wanted to um, impose a tax. They wanted to make the Nubian, the Nubian to pay a tax because they were something about, uh, they wanted to make the Nubian, the Nubians a basal state. And Queen, so they wanted to tax the Nubians for, leave, for, living, uh, for living in, in their country. And the queen opposed to that, to that tax that they were um, imposing on them. And as a result, Queen, I want to say the name right, Amenorinus, Queen Amenorinus waged a successful campaign against this issue, against the Romans. So, you know, she, and to make her point with her people, to make her point with her people, 
she during one of the last battles they had because they were having continuing battles again uh over this tax issue and over you know foreign invasion they did the, the romans obviously were trying to push more and more south further south into the nubian state and 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 they kept having uh, many battles over that and in one of the battles there was a statue of um augustus now you know augustus was the very first roman uh, the first Roman Empire in Egypt, you know, after he passed, and several other, uh, you know, general, you know, um, kings took over. So, but he was the first. So he was sort of like a, sort of like a Desalines. So, like you know, he was well known, and he represented, uh, the, you know, the Romans in their minds. So, during one of the battles, um, in one of the cities. Roman cities that um, Queen uh, that the Kush had actually uh, defeated. So there was a statue of of Augustus, you know, and Queen Amenorinus took the um, the um, the the heads of the statue, which is the head of Augustus, and he took she took she took the head of the stat the statue and. She buried it under her temple. This was done publicly with the entire nation watching that. So symbolically, she took the head of Augustus and she buried it under her temple, letting her people see in a way that the war that they have between the Romans and them is a war that they've already won because here's Augustus' head under her temple. Well, eventually the Kushites, they kept, um, they kept um, having battles. The Kushites, as I told you, they were very well armed with their bows. Eventually the Romans encountered a lot of difficulty navigating the landscape of the Nubian regions. And finally they realized it was just going to be very difficult in order for them to um, keep going further and further into the territories of the Kushites. So they couldn't, they didn't, they couldn't go into securing any more Kushite borders as a result. Eventually the queen signed a treaty where she got everything she wanted and including she resented the tax revolt and she got even more than she wanted because of that. And what one thing that had happened also was that Queen Amenorinus, before this happened, went sent um, Petronius, the the Roman king, a bow. Well, in case you know, as a gift, and she wrote in there this gift is from the Candace. The Candace was another word for um, um, queens, warrior queens, you know, strong warrior queens. She said, this gift is from the Candace. If you want peace, this is a token of her warmth and friendship. But if you want war, keep the arrows because you will need them. That was Queen Amenorinus. And she won, she won for her people. The Romans, the Nubians were the only uh, successful people who didn't, uh, at that time, uh, that the Romans had not invaded the, uh, the Nubians. Of course, later on, eventually, they were met with further foreign invasion and they lost their battles. But, if, but the queen had kept her people safe and free for a very long time. I chose this story because it shows the importance of uh, symbolism. Uh, how important um, symbolism is important in any battle, but even in our spiritual battle, um, to understand that um, sometimes we can win a war way before we actually physically win it because um, symbols is everything. So it's important for us as we practice our spirituality to put into 
context, what type of symbols that we um, give our energy to and which ones should we be giving our energy to and which one we should not because um, giving our energy to different symbols actually empowers um, sometimes the opposite force that we actually are trying to um, fight. So it's important that in, in these days, in in this world, there's symbols is everything, you know, and we live in app world. We live in, uh, in a world where everything is billboards and apps and, and they're all symbols and they all get our attention and they all take our energy. And it's important to know consciously what is it that, um, that are symbolic in our lives and that we are um, feeding our energy with. So I thought this was a great story for me to start with the History Fridays. I'm sorry that I did it so late. I was very busy today, um, something um, I had to do. and But I thought it's important that um, we. I started with this story that talks about symbols um, and the importance of symbolism. So Queen Aminoranus and Kush, it's a great story if you ever have time. Um, there are plenty of... Um, you know, documentaries on Queen Amenorrhenus that you can look at to understand more about Kush, the civilization of Kush, uh, the Nubians, uh, current day um, Sudan, and how it relates to our current um, battle in terms of um, Haiti, what we um going through. So symbolism is important. Thank you.